lecture uh, where uh, you can learn on your self explanatory one will be there all this uh, next few slides are from those books only so how the exposure condition once if you construct so it is a construction see normally people used to tell that the material doesn't have a value of uh, anything during the construction only the structural part is important so uh, my part is that even if you have a good structural engineer and good architect to do a construction if you have a poor quality of the material you may not be able to achieve what is expected one in the form of a uh, property or the performance of the material so in such a way when we after construction there is a exposure condition so for better understanding i am not going to deep of your technical terminologies so our structure will be exposed to sunlight am i right yes or no similarly the structure will be exposed to rain so in summer it is different and in winter it is different so the exposure conditions are different similarly for the service so if there is there may be a possibility of having one for a period of 3 months there may be a possibility of having a chemical inclusions in the concrete for example if it is made by of chloride so there may be other possibility there may in the form of a freezing and thawing process then the services so for example if this room is designed for a capacity of 50 students or 50 more than 50 students can we able to accommodate here the 500 students no it is not possible so like that there is a de design deficiency the material interaction and the construction deficiency so which all this leads to first material will get fail in the structure your column will not collapse suddenly only there is a possibility of disintegration spalling then cracking wear deflection and then the finally you have a settlement so in that point the concrete does not always be as we like some of the undesirable behaviors are given here that is the what are the effects so there may be a possibility of leakage settlement deflection wear spalling disintegration cracking delamination scaling so what are the causes so as i mentioned there are many causes i take only this part maybe for your at your level this may be more familiar and easy understood so the important metal corrosion corrosion induced to scaling and uh, cracking and spalling uh, reduction in the structural concrete chlorine penetration cracks and the chlorides carbonization i will correlate this with the experiments conducted and also you can remember whatever i am telling here in the previous slides it was shown so when you have a embedded metal corrosion see there is a possibility of having a corrosion at the surface level so high alkaline material so the ph should be of between 12 and 13 in the range of alkalinity the embedded so there may be a possibility see normally what we will happen here is i will go for suddenly i will go for this one because this is more related see you have a steel reinforcement here when there is a possibility of as already mentioned it, the ph value should be of 12 to 13 when there is a possibility of some acidic gases that the carbon dioxide which takes places into it so this is the equation that takes place carbon dioxide plus h2o which reacts with the calcium hydroxide in your concrete form a calcium carbonate so when there is a possibility of the calcium carbonate automatically the ph value will get reduced so once the ph value get reduced day by day see whatever i am telling right now it will not happen suddenly by today tomorrow the structure will fail everything go no, nothing like that so as the in days increases years increases first there will be a possibility of delamination then automatically what will happen then your ph value will get reduced then there is a possibility of taking place in the corrosion see these kind of issues when it occurs in the structure what is the remedy for this one we use conventional cement we use conventional coarse aggregate fine aggregate similarly there is a, a cracking and spalling so this is all self explanatory so you will have a corrosion at this point so whatever the uh, here there is a, a ratio that i have given so for the cover bar thickness and the percentage of corrosion that takes place so the reduction in the structural capacity so there is a loss of reinforcement here the section is lost so the percentage of uh, taking the ultimate load is getting reduced this is called chloride in uh, penetration so as i told you about the corrosion similarly there is a possibility of chloride that is penetrated into water uh, concrete with the help of your surface moisture if your 
surface is exposed to some uh, rainfall or for a long time, then automatically there is a possibility of intrusion of your chloride, which will delaminate the surface and automatically once it is delaminated, it will reach the reinforcement and start the corrosion. So that is what uh, detail it has been given. This is the form of cracks and as I explained corrosion. So this is a steel member corrosion that takes place. Okay. Now, these all the behavior of concrete that takes place. So I have told you about the uh, introduction part which tells you about the material thing, uh, pure material properties. So we have a oxide composition. There is a four pra parameters which is very essential which contributes towards the enhancement of the property and the behavioral wise there is an issue. Now what is an alternative? So we go for an high performance concrete. So I will tell you how this is related to that. So as the definition tells you that it satisfies the critical aspects of fabrication, utilization at the very possible way. This is a new type of concrete that requires an unconventional component and the techniques. So, uh, there are uh, not a specific design is available. Recently, IS 1062 have given a specific design for high strength. I have a, a new design, uh, I will show you. So, what is the research work it, uh, here we take is, so we uh, observed that some supplementary cementitious material is to be used in the place of a uh, cement. So conventionally, uh, people used to tell us a waste, it is not a waste, uh, it is a byproduct from an industry which is called as sugar can bagasheas. So this is sugar can bagasheas. So there are a lot of things available in the market. So people worked on rice as cash, silica fume, GGBS, currently market, in market itself blended slag cement is available. So then rice as cash and bagasheas. So uh, we have started working on bagasheas. So it is a highly active pozzolana which has a amorphous silica content and the large surface area. So similarly uh, the uh, properties that is the in the uh, whatever the required property I think we, we are able to achieve with the waste management system. So we have taken this one into account and how to start working directly we cannot go for a conventional concrete in a place of replacement. So we started with the cement paste, cement mortar then concrete and then finally a high performance concrete. Even we have tried with the steel fiber and the polypropylene fiber but I have not shown here. So this is what the methodology which is adapted. So the literature we have reviewed. So initially based on the literature we have identified the proportions to be from 0 to 30. So the, there will be totally a 7 proportion. The marker mixer of 1 is to 3 ratio is taken. And after doing all this experimental work, so we concluded that, so here 30 and 25 is not giving an any uh, enhanced property like durability or strength. So in the HPC we thought of removing this one, we discarded 30 and 25. So after that we conducted an experiment for pressure and hardened properties of HPC. Then we found that 15 and 25 is not suitable, so 10 is a optimum percentage. So People used to question how you are uh, giving a solution that uh, based on the experiment. So even we use some optimization techniques also like uh, Takuji based topsis method and analytical hierarchy process. So based on that the optimization is carried out. The similar results was identified and then keeping the 10 percentage as a constant we have varied the steel fiber and the polypropylene fiber and uh, the uh, hybrid fiber also is considered. So, uh, for this HPFRCC, that is high performance fiber reinforced concrete composite, we have done the experiment on fresh and hardened properties. For this, we have casted a beam column and beam column jointed. So, this is analyzed using our budget and then finally concluded. This is the overall picture of a project starting from cement paste, cement mortar, concrete, high performance concrete, high performance fiber reinforced concrete. So, based on the literature, we found that uh, the 30 up to 30 we are supposed to take. It was a similar work which has been carried out, but the material wise we use a conventional pure. I will tell you how the material we have procured, how we processed it, all those things, details I will tell you. So, uh, conventional we have a OPC 53 grade used for the cement mortar and the high performance concrete. 
So Bagashi has been used, whatever it is used in the test is collected by Gobi Chetivala in Tamil Nadu. And the specific gravities of the cement is 3.15 and 2.18 for the Bagashias. And the silica content is 5 times of greater than that of your uh, conventional cement. So this is a semi image of the Bagashias, EDAX image of the Bagashias. So uh, the silicon dioxide of OPC is 17.98 and the Bagashias 55.49. So the aggregate, so all these specifications are confining with the IS383, the grading zone, everything. And the uh, plasticizer which we use is uh, polycarboxylic ether based. So the dosage adapted is 7 liters per meter cube of cement. So uh, usually I uh, tell students not to go for uh, uh, different trials at the starting stage itself. So we conclude the mix by using the slump value itself. So by uh, keeping the slump as a benchmark, so we conclude the mix proportions whether it is suitable or not nowadays. So why that is happening is we need adequate workability whenever we have an alternative material otherwise people will not accept for it. So for example if you take this is a gravel and this is a mortar. So here if you zoom it and see this is a sand and this is a cement case. So here need enough mortar to keep all your gravels apart. So now taking this uh, same picture here cement base on the sand, zooming it off, so water and the cement base. So now here we need enough base to keep the grains apart. So similarly the cement and the water, so mixing water to lubricate all your cement base, so the water is required. So there may be a possibility of having some air also, so air entrainment meter can be used to check it. So water cement ratio plays a vital role uh, to enhance the strength and the durability properties, that is uh, the from 0 per percentage of hydration to the 100. So this is a book called uh, PC Einstein, High Performance Concrete. You can download it easily from the internet. It is op openly available book. So where you can find a mixed design for high performance concrete. So very simple mixed design. So this is a table which gives you about the, the water, based on the water cement ratio, the compressive strength is given. So from this we can take the water cement ratio and the second number is water content and the third one is uh, so from this the minimum water dosage can be taken and then coarse aggregate value will be taken and finally the provision is 1.5 percentage and initial estimate of air entrainment so here this also can be tested in the laboratory by using air entrainment meter right so this is a very uh, uh, easy and uh, also interesting uh, a sheet so Give all your input data here, the material property, cement, coarse aggregate and fine aggregate. Automatically it will bring you to the 30th portion. So we work for a uh, 100 MPA and this is for 60 MPA, trial 1, trial 2 and trial 3. So finally we achieved this mixed design, right? So keeping this as a mixed design, so as I told you, we started with 7 proportions, then uh, HPC 5 proportion and HPFRC 11 proportion by using various steel fiber and the polypropylene fiber. So uh, different proportions have been calculated and uh, the number of specimens that has been used for the casting is uh, shown here. So uh, first is cement based. So as I told you, uh, so before we uh, take further experimental part, we want to ensure that the material that we used having the sufficient property of the conventional cement. So uh, initial trial has been conducted, so the traces were reviewed. So it is not a very easy task to do a microstructure analysis with the funding which we have right now. Uh, so previously we had a very good funding, so uh, we are sophisticated with an equipment also with our laboratory. So XRD is carried out, FTAR, uh, then elemental properties, EDX and then SIM. Uh, finally the morphology is studied, right? So, how, so the main uh, task here is how we are going to prepare the sample for testing the in the microstructural level. So that is very important. If you refer literature, you will find lot of different procedures that is adapted. So keeping all the lessons we learned, we finally have a very simple method of uh, preparing the sample. So uh, before that, I will tell you how this process is carried out. Uh, yes. So we have. Uh, brought our uh, wet bagasias, we have identified an industry in the uh, Gobi City Balayam. So they used to burn the rice as uh, uh, sugar can bagashi. So from them we used to get the, you, you can uh, call like uh, after you take a 
juice from that the extract will be there now. So that will be taken by us. Uh, in different slots, I think around 30 slots we have brought from Gopi Palayam. We have a place for dumping it, so it was dumped there. So the wet bagasias is dried in the open space and after that it was burned at 120 degrees Celsius. So we call it as a dry bagashi and this is supposed to be a raw bagashi. So what is happening here is, so you can have a two options. One is without doing any process, untreated bagashias can be taken like this and you can go for uh, experimental. But uh, as far as the literature, we come to a conclusion that uh, untreated, compared to untreated bagasias, treated bagasias are given more effective performance. So we have gone for a treated bagasias. So the sample is taken for grinding for 120 minutes with the ball milling. And then it is dried at 600 degrees for 3 hours. Then it is pulverized for 1 hour with the pulverizer. And finally we arrived at treated bagasias. So it is a very difficult task, so if it is a mass production it may be easy, but uh, when we do it in a small scale production, then it, 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 see normally we used to get the material and we have an airtight container will be there, a ziplock uh, container will be there, so it will be placed there and uh, so we increased our production till uh, up to we used to do the production uh, up to 50 kgs, then we start our experimental work, so that is the main thing we uh, do with the production. So once the material is ready, now we are supposed to go for cement paste and the cement mortar. So as per IS 1727-2004, so the main Poslonic performance is to be identified. So there are certain procedures to identify the Poslonic performance of the material which is used as an alternative material. So for that we have used chemical compositions and the uh, analyzed by using XRF feed acts and the morphology is then assume I don't want to go much deeper into it. it is a very big topic because the interpretation of the results is still uh, a difficult one. So uh, the physical properties are identified like explosive gravity, standard consistency, uh, strength activity index, results and other details. Um, this is a morphology study. Yes. So coming back to this compositions. So if you see uh, the results, uh, yes, I want to show you this uh, preparation, I think I have not given uh, here, maybe okay, I will show you. So this is a cement, uh, general conventional cement uh, semi majors. so you can find, see this allied, bellite and all it is nothing but uh, it is a C3S, C2S and C4AF and uh, the other name for uh, all the compositions are elite and malite. So this is for a conventional SCBC. Yes. So now uh, the very crucial thing which we find it very difficult is preparation of sample for microstructure. So uh, we have to stop the iteration. Uh, after stopping the iteration, the sample is to be tested. So for that, we have taken a, a sample preparation method. So you have seen the leach-attrated apparatus which is used for soundness measurement. So volume change we used to do this then. So we have taken all the proportions for the different bagashias. So from that we have identified two days, only seven days of getting the value of microstructure and 28 days of getting the value. So the sample is prepared in the leach-attrated apparatus. So this is a hardened sample for seven days and 28 days. So this sample is powdered by using a uh, a machine and then uh, it is uh, packed in a plastic wall. So these samples will be uh, taken for the testing. So this procedure if, uh, of making, a, there is a possibility of having acetone as a uh, uh, material to stop the hydration process. So finally, after the sample is tested, we used to get the XR diesel. So I don't want to go much deeper into this because I have uh, two other topics to discuss. So uh, this is an XRD itself for 7 days of Vagashias with 0 percentage, uh, this is a 5 percentage Vagashias result, 10 percentage, 15, 20. Uh, so the interpretation uh, clearly mentions that the intensity of CH that is uh, calcium we get decreases. So obviously when there is a decrease in the CH, so it, it increases the CH as well, but the indication of the postnodic activity that takes place in the blended cement, this is FTAR results for all 10, 5, 15, 20. Uh, so the FTR results will be valued based on the wavelength that is taken into account. This is the 
possible assignment that has been considered. So the conclusion is that it can be observed that the amount of CSS cells in the sample B2 that is 10 percentage and the uh, B3 that is 15 percentage is more. So roughly predicted that the area under the curve and the significant increase in the intensity peaks are 28 days when compared to the idea. So when these kind of understanding is there, there is a possibility of CSL enhancement in the intensity of the peak, then obviously there is a scope for having a Poslonic reaction that takes place. <coughs> Similarly, the morphology study, so you can find some CHS group here, CH, CH, so this is for 0 days, uh, 0 percentage and this is for 5 percentage. So previously, you may not be <coughs> able to clearly identify about the CSS, uh, there is a possibility of CSS group, uh, here the cluster of CSS is available. So you can find the difference in the pictures. So this is 0 percentage, this is 5 percentage, this is 10 percentage and 15 percentage, 20 percentage. So the morphology is getting uh, deeper and deeper based on the uh, uh, resolution. So finally it is concluded that the presence of CS <coughs> is indicated, indicated in the plate. So, Obviously, after 28 days, there is a possibility. This is a <coughs> EDS analysis for 0 percentage. Twenty percentage. So, O, C, A, L, S, I and C, A. So, it is observed that the high composition of calcium and silicate that takes place with 10 percentage. So, a summary. As per the codal equation 1727-2004, so the taken material that is uh, uh, considered material for the replacement that is the Nagashi as is suitable for alternative to the cement based on the microstructural characteristics. So then we have started working on cement based and mortar. So all this test has been uh, conducted that is the cement based and mortar. So, specific gravity, consistency, expansion, flow table, drying sinkage, air content. Um, so, uh, all those things are based on based on the matter. So, there is a specific gravity, there is a deep fall and there is an increase in the standard consistency. So, there is a constant way of having initial and final setting time. There is an increase in the volume. So, all these tests are uh, on par with the standard. So, there is no point of having uh, the backwards in the proportion. So, ideally the proportion that is identified after doing all these things. See, the only one thing I want to uh, be uh, giving you a very clear picture is that for the cement master, we can do some flexural strength analysis. So, flexural strength can be taken for cement master also by using the flexural brick assembly and the, from the sample it can be tested for compressive brick assembly also. So, here also we found that it is 10 and 20 percentage are more suitable and the strength activity in as per A, STMC 311, so up to 75 percentage, so the 75 percentage is here. So, all the uh, variation that has been considered from the proportion are more than 75 percentage in terms of 3, 7 and 28. So, this also confines that it is suitable for an alternative material, as an alternative material. So, this is a water permeability test results. So as a summary, which gives you very good filler effect, then in